All right, I want to show you guys a great way to work with what are called CSS sprites. These are, let me show you, okay? <laughs> if you have supposed uh, list items or a div or a table or a heading, clearing method is actually a heading, and you want to be able to hover over it and change images. Let's say you've got little icons that you want to put on your page. Well, it's not that hard. We can use something called the, um, the hover pseudo class, and I'll show you that. But all these little icons tend to take up time and little teeny icons are hard to track and you know it, they take a lot of requests to the actual server to get all these on your page so instead of us using one two fifty icons that kind of thing what we can do is we can consolidate them all into one big picture and that's called working with CSS sprites now let me show you what I'm talking about I'm gonna go over to Illustrator and you guys can use Illustrator Photoshop fireworks it doesn't matter now, back in the day, what we would do is we'd create one big image and we'd use the slice tool to cut these out and create separate pictures for them, separate, you know, JPEGs or whatever we wanted, GIFs, etc. That way we keep track of them all and put them in there, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is we have so many of these to take care of that it just becomes unruly. So what we can do is we can put them all in one big image. If you guys are in Illustrator, you use one artboard. If you're in Photoshop, you just create a document and basically just have one big canvas put all of your images in there. Now, a couple tips here. You're going to put them all not, well, if you're going to use them for hover, let's say. So when you hover over something, it changes images. These are going to be in the background of your object. So for instance, if you look over on the right over here, I've kind of tried to create a lame example. Pretend that this box, this little box right here is my list item. Okay. Now this white box represents your page and it's covering, and I made it a little transparent. It's covering up the rest of the image. You can see that's just one big image put as a background image behind the list item. And we can do this in a div, we can do it in anything. What happens is we can make it when somebody hovers over the list item right there, that background image actually will shift. So it'll just change what's called background position. That's it. That's what a CSS sprite is. Now, if you want to have it where, you know, it's, it's one icon showing up and you've got a really small area, like a little teeny div, you could put all of these in one canvas in Photoshop or one artboard in Illustrator and put them all next to each other, just make a big block or a big square. But since we're gonna go through and I, I wanna put this as a background image and I wanna stick it inside of a list item, I wanna make sure I don't have other images sitting over here on the right because they're in the background. So I put them vertically, straight up and down like this. That way we're just gonna come in here and just slide these things up and down and change the position when somebody goes to hover over and that's it. That's what a CSS sprite is, you guys. Make sure there's enough uh, room between each one of these images because otherwise, if you don't, you're going to start to see the other image kind of creep in here in the background. And you want to make sure they're perfectly lined up and the spacing is the same between these. In Photoshop and Illustrator, I will either use the rulers or I'll use like my transform panel or some way to get the space evenly. And I use even numbers. Like I'll use like 50 pixels to put space between because you're going to do a little math when you get in there. Okay, and I'll show you. All right, so I take this one... Uh, image here, this one guy right here, in Photoshop and in Illustrator, I will go to File, Save for Web and Devices. I will save it as a JPEG, a ping, whatever. I'll save it as a ping, and I'll put it in a folder that I can use it. Now, I've already done that. So let me go over to Dreamweaver. And if you look, you're going to see this is the page that's final. And I can see I've got these little list items, and this is a background image. It's just being hidden. The rest of it's being hidden. So let me go to a test page where I start and just show you the process here. All right, let me go over to my CSS Styles, CSS Styles panel. This is one of 50 ways to do it, you guys. Let me pull this down a little bit so we can see some stuff. And I'll put it down towards the bottom down here. This is a, uh, a, a UL, and what we're going to do is apply a class to it. So let me make a style first. So I'll come over here, and you guys can do this to anything. You can do it to a div, to a headline, it doesn't matter. I'll make a new style in CSS. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this something like UL dot, um, I don't know, icons or something like that. I'll put it in my style sheet. Now the class right there, that's it. That's a UL is the actual tag. Dot icons is the class. So we're going to say specifically focus on this one. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. I'll click OK. And I'll just do one thing to this. We could do 50, but I'll say list style type none. I want to get rid of the bullets. Okay, I'll click OK. Now we created a style here with a class. We've got to go over to this list and apply that class now. So my cursor's in it. I'll come right down here and click on UL. There's 50 ways to do this. You guys can do it in the code too. I'll go to class in the property inspector. 
And you guys can see, if I take a look on here, there's icons right there. I'll click on that, and you'll see it automatically applied, ul.icons right there, and it took away the bullets, because that's the style I set. Okay, now we're going to create another style here. So I'm going to go over and make a new style for the list items. For each list item, we're going to put the background image in each one. So I'll come down here, click on the new CSS rule. Dreamweaver calls this a compound type deal, um, but I'll just, whatever, we don't have to, you guys. So I'll call it ul.iconsli so we know which one to focus on here. This, this list and these list items. I'll click OK. I'm going to put a background image in, so I'll go browse for an image here. And you guys, you can pause this video and go back. I apologize, I don't mean to go so fast here. but And I, I tried a couple different versions here. They're the same thing, basically. One sprite image, it's a ping. I'll click OK. I'll click apply. If you take a look, you'll see, okay, well, it's putting it in there, but it's repeating it across. And it's barely showing because there's white white space up here. So what I need to do is position it. So I'll go to background position, zero for X. Y is really important, you guys. I'm going to try like minus 20 pixels. And oh, there we go. Not too bad. Now we need to tell it not to repeat. So I'll say background repeat, no repeat. It'll just put one in there. Now we need to take the text inside and push it over. Like I said, you guys, if this was a div, you do the same thing. If it was a heading, we do the same thing. Come to box, come to padding. On the left, I'm just going to do a bunch of padding here and try and see what we get. Okay, that's way too much. <laughs> Sorry, I just test. Eh, all right, 55 will work. Okay, now I'm going to put just a little bit more padding in here just so we have a bit so you guys can, can kind of see what's going on here. So all around each list item, I'm going to put five pixels of padding, click apply. Yeah, I could do more, but anyway, we'll leave it there. Click OK. So that's a background image. Now, I need to change each one independently, you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a class on each list item. So we need to make some more styles here. That way we can hover and have it change and change its position. So I'll go over and make a new style. I'm going to come down here to Compound once again. And this time, you guys, it's going to be a little interesting because I've got to kind of keep this because it's not going to yeah, – you'll see in a second – I'll just make this. I'll say, okay, I'm being a little bit carried, I'm getting a little carried away here, be more specific here, but I'm saying, okay, for only this list, if you find a list item with the class AI assigned to it, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, we're going to do that. I'll click OK. I'm just going to click OK, you guys, because I'm making a style, but I'm not doing anything with it. Now I'm going to make one more for InDesign, so for this list item. So we're going to change the position of the actual image, the background image. So I'll make a new style. We could always copy that one, you guys. And I'll just come in and say ul.icons. Like I said, I'm getting a little carried away with that, but anyway. That's just so you guys can see. So find the ul list, the unordered list with icons applied. Find the list item with id class applied, which we haven't done yet. And let's do this. I'll click OK. And we need to shift the position. Now, you guys, I'm just going to click OK and make the style because I haven't applied the id class to this yet, to, to pinpoint it. So I'll click OK. Come to InDesign here, this one here. I'm going to click on LI. I'll make sure I have that selected so we can apply the class to the list item. I'll come to class. And if you look, you're going to see that we've got ID right there. Now, LI.ID. So it says right here, the same thing my style is, UL.icons, LI.ID. We just applied the class to InDesign. Now we're going to go over to the style and change it. Double click. Come to background. Now here's the catch, you guys. You're going to see that I don't have background image in here because the generic list item style UL icons li is already putting the background image in there. All I need to do is reposition it now. Put pull, push it up. So here's the catch. If I go back over to Illustrator or Photoshop, whatever you guys are in, you're going to see my InDesign one is way down here. So we've got to shift this image. Watch over here. Shift this image way up like this. So I got to figure out how far to push it up. Now I know I put 50 pixels of space between each one of these. So I've got 50 here, 100, 150, 200, 250. 300, 300 pixels down, 350, 400 pixels down from the original Illustrator. So I need to go down another 400 pixels, shift it up. So let me go back to Dreamweaver. I'm going to go to background position and say X is going to stay zero. That's this way. And Y will shift up. So I'm going to go minus, what did I say? Are you kidding me? I always forget this. Are you kidding? I'm so stuck. 2, 3, 4, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. I am. Really, you guys, I'm not that dumb. So minus 400, I'll click Apply. Now, you're going to notice there's a little difference here because in the original, we said minus 20. So I need to add that in here, too, to shift it up a little. So minus 420, just to get it up there. Click Apply, and there we go. 
So you guys can see it, the background image, I shifted it way up. Negative pushes it up. Positive pushes the background image down. And there it is. That's using the sprite. Now let's add a little something here. I want to make it when we hover, we actually shift it again. And we go down, if you watch, like go over to Illustrator, we go down to the transparent one. Okay, so that's another 50 pixels down. So I'm going to make another style, you guys. Another style. And I'll just call it ul.icons. We can always copy paste these. li.id colon hover. You guys, this is the catch. The colon hover is a pseudo class. You've seen that with links. A colon hover. You know, uh, also, or, yeah, A colon hover. A colon link, A colon visit, etc. We can add these pseudo classes to just about anything. If you had a div here, you could say div colon hover, and it would say, okay, when you hover over the div, let's do something. So I'll click OK. And this works in all versions of IE except for 6 and earlier. <laughs> Whatever. I'll go to background, and I'll just shift the background. So the background position, we had it at minus 420. That would keep the same image there, but I'm going to shift it up another 50. So we get the other image, so I'll go to minus 470. Click OK. I don't need to do the rest, you guys. It's already done. I will put an X in there, though, to make sure. Zero. Click OK. You can't test it in here, so I'm going to go test it out. Firefox. Save all my stuff. And if you guys take a look, look what happens. On hover for this list item, the specific list item, I'm saying shift it up another 50 pixels. That way, if you guys look, we move the background image up so that we actually get it to see transparency. You're going to have to go to each one of these, as many as you create, you guys. You're going to have to create a style for each as far as list items like this. You're going to have to reposition, and that's going to take some time. It's not going to be perfect. You guys, I, I did the math on this and did it a couple times to try it out, but you can do that. Now, here's a little tip for you. If you're working with these types of CSS sprites and you don't have the ability to create one big picture, let's say you already have 50 little pictures. And let me let me show you this again. I'm going to go out to my desktop real quick, and I think I've already got them here. Yeah, let's suppose you guys have all these saved already as pictures. What you can do is you can take all of these and go out and send them to, seriously? Send to, there we go, sorry. Send to zip file, compress zip folder. If you guys zip them, what you can do is you can go over to this website, spritegen, websiteperformance.org. You can upload the zip file, and what it'll do is it'll actually give you, if you watch, hold on. I'll go to my images folder here and find that thing. There's a lot of stuff we can set here. I'll just click Create Sprite and Image just to show you what this does. What it actually does, you guys, is it literally will give you all of the styles you need to create for your regular. They called it the class here, Sprite AI, Sprite AI Hover. You can see right there. And then we can actually create the styles from this, and they tell us the positions we need to move it. It's really cool. There's a lot of great things we can do with this, you guys, to get these in position. Anyway, some good stuff. That'll create one big image as well. So you guys can see it'll create one big image for you, one ping. You can download the sprite image and see what it actually looks like. Let me open this thing up. So it'll put them all together in one big picture. It'll give you the X, Y coordinates for the background images and all that stuff, and you can use it that way. That's in case you guys already have all the images together, but that's an awesome little feature. So anyway, this is a long tip. I apologize, but there you go, working with CSS sprites.